to address the students. Um, I, this, is, this is another opportunity for me to talk to the students. The fact that the schools are reopened and uh, you are back in school, year 12 and 13 exams are over, and those students who are in year 11 will be going into year 12 next year. Uh, not next year, actually in April. So you know that our school year has changed. Our school year, uh, a new school year will start from 11th of April. So on 1st April, we are all taking one week break. I think more than you, the teachers need a break. Right, because you just started now, but the teachers have been in the system for a while. So uh, for the students, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we do appreciate the fact that most of you got yourself vaccinated, which was very important for the opening of the school. But we also like to change some of the subjects that's been offered in school and also change the exams that, are, that currently you sit. We intend to remove term exams, like you have term one, term two, term three, replace it with media examination and annual examination, just two exams. Because it seriously doesn't make sense when you have first term exam and the students have just started uh, that particular level. And most of the time it goes away in the exam rather than teaching and learning. We also recognize the fact that students, we, we, all have, we all differ in our intellectual ability, to be honest. Some of us, we are so creative. We are so creative, we are talented, and we want to pursue that in our lives. Some of us, we are gifted, we are intellectually um, able, and therefore we want to pursue academic studies. But the current school system is such that we are not placing emphasis on individual needs. For example, uh, the creativity or the talents that the students have. Even though a child after year 12 will join technical and vocational courses, but they end up doing basically the same subject, like same maths, same English. Right. So we want to uh, offer more subjects uh, to the students so that you can make a choice whether you would like to pursue technical and vocational courses or you want to go academic line. Uh, technical and vocational courses, I want to encourage the students to think seriously about technical and vocational courses. Don't ever think that technical and vocational courses are for students who are not smart. Never ever think that way. Technical and vocational courses have been taken by people and today they earn more than some of us holding a degree in our hand. And yet we are looking for a job. I'll give you a good example. North Pole, the, the, the pizza place, lunchbox that you go to. Right. The owner of Lunchbox, it was through technical and vocational courses that he's where he is today. Another good example is mechanical services. The gentleman who owns mechanical services, he owns millions of dollars. He drives four-wheel drive. He owns uh, properties. And he's a product of FIT. So never ever underestimate technical and vocational courses because you can become your own boss. You don't have to look around for a job. Some of you are extremely talented in beautician courses, like you love makeup, you play around with makeup. And if you want to pursue that area, you should. You should. Because then you can open up your beauty parlor. You can employ many more people. Now to help you with your technical and vocational courses, this year government has, is offering 5,000 fully funded spots at FMU. And you can pursue those courses. 
So I just wanted to talk to you along that line and encourage you to pursue your dream and do not be carried away by someone else trying to, trying to drive uh, your career path. You should be able to understand where you want to be and what you want to do. All right, so I thought I'd share this with you. I also would like to pay my deepest respect to the school management committee, uh, past and present, for investing in this school. We recognize that the school belongs to the, uh, the community, which is the Sangam community, and uh, it is through community that the schools were built. Now that the schools are built, it's running, it is managed by the school management committee. So school management committee is a conduit between government and the community. So they represent the community in all the discussions. And we appreciate the contribution they have made in the area of education. But I also would like to emphasize, emphasize that the students seated here today you don't know, and I think you need to go and talk to your parents about this. There was a time when I was studying, I come from a family of seven, and I was the eldest child. My parents had to take out school fees for seven of us when we went to school. $50 per term. Seven children, seven times 50, you can add it up. So my parents used to pay school fees, they had to pay for the bus fares, they had to buy the textbooks, and life was not easy. Today, that burden, financial burden, has been taken away from your parents. The government provides the tuition fee, the government deals with the bus fare and provides textbooks. And because of the discrimination, or not discrimination, the fact that people were not well off and they had to pay uh, the children's um, uh, school fees, there were families who could not send their girl child to school because it was not a good investment making into a girl child. But spending that money for their sons was seen as a big investment because son will remain with the parents, the girl will get married and move on. So there were this restriction, and we are celebrating International Women's uh, Day for the month of March, and I want to wish all the girls seated here, as well as all our teachers, happy International Women's Day. We have come a very long way. Our battle is still not over. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, I think I did mention that in Suva, that till today, a women, are not well represented in the leadership role. Only 10% of our women are chief executive officers, only 10%. 20% of our women are in boards and committees, either they are chairperson or they are board members. And worse, only 17.6% of our women are in parliament despite the fact that women make up 50% of the population. So these disparities are there, but that does not mean that the women should, do, should just accept and live with it. So International Women's Day celebration in the month of March is to raise women's concerns, and as women we have to voice uh, our concerns publicly so that our voices are heard, right? Education itself, the investment the government makes in education is around $700 million every year. $700 million, it's not a small amount of money. $700 million goes towards free education grant, teacher's salary, uh, your textbooks, free transport, etc etc but what is the rate of return if you study economics 
will be questioning what is the rate of return if you're making such investment in education sector. From the government's perspective, the outcome that we would like to see from the education sector is our children, it's their future. We want our children to be good citizens. We want our children to improve their quality of life and their family's quality of life. And they are able to contribute in building our nation. These are the three outcomes that we are looking for. And that's why that level of investment is made uh, in the uh, education of our children. For the students of this era, we're talking about 21st century, children in 21st century are very different as compared to students of 20th century. In 20th century, the focus was on social justice and environment. In 21st century, the focus is health and technology. So if technology is the focus, how are we teaching our children in school? If our children are from 21st century, can we use the same teaching methods that we used in the 20th century for our 21st century students? We cannot and we should not. And for that reason, we are making sure from the Ministry of Education perspective, we have hired the e-learning director and the e-learning director will make sure that each and every school are embarking or moving towards e-teaching. So we need to use our electronics to teach our children. And I'm sure the students seated here, you are tech savvy, you love playing with your mobile phone, am I right? You love playing with your computers, your laptops, is that so? And you love fixing technologies for your parents when they make silly mistakes with their mobile phones and computers. Am I right? So who taught you all this? Did you go to a school to learn this? No. See, you were born with those talents. So as teachers, as Ministry of Education, we have to deviate from the, um, I always say, the traditional teaching methods to what our children want to do. And I did mention to someone recently that I came across a company in the North, uh, in the in Nendi, uh, and they are offering uh, technology-driven. Um, sessions to young students. This is like ECE to year 9. These students go to that uh, school and you'll be amazed. They don't go there to play games. They go there to make games. There's a difference between playing games and making games. And we want our children to make games. And we want our teachers to teach using games. And that would be more interesting and exciting. Am I right, students? So you can see, teachers, I've got 100% support here. But I also want to share with you that uh, I have been receiving letters from the students. I received a letter from a student in Suva simply asking questions. And the question he asked was, why do I have to write notes? <laughs> and the question was also, why can't I be given photocopied notes? Better still, why can't I be asked to make my own notes from the textbook? These were some very valid questions being asked by students. And we need to be technology driven. 
We need to move in that direction, otherwise we will be left behind. So I just wanted to share this with, uh, with you all. I will not take much of your time. I can see that students for getting yourself vaccinated and also thank the teachers for the wonderful work that you did during uh, COVID lockdown. Uh, most of you were doing the worksheets and you were still in contact with your students and we appreciate that. Uh, and I also like to thank the head of school uh, for uh, working with the school management committee in making sure that the school environment is conducive for teaching and learning. So with great appreciation, thank you very much.